you haven't noticed by now, a lot of the NFT collections out there have a zombie, dead, vampire, mutant theme, and that is why I think the space is going to be well lit with activity, especially with Halloween just coming up right around the corner. And today, I wanted to focus specifically on this collection called the Mutant Ape Yacht Club. So if you're new in the NFT space, I suppose you will have a lot of questions like, what happens when I get into a club? Do I really get access to these high net worth people in the club? Are there any financial incentives to be in the club other than networking? So to answer these questions, there's really a lot to list, but two main ones I want to highlight are, first, you get full commercial rights to your ape, and you can also bet on price appreciation of your NFT. So when you hold an ape, you get full commercial rights, and that just means you can turn yours into a character or make a whole cartoon around it, or a sort of virtual influencer that becomes big. Now, even if you don't do any of that yourself, there are still thousands of holders out there, and some will, because this is a collective group. Whenever someone else out there does something to raise the value of the apes, the total floor price of the apes rises with it. So you want to think of it like you're in a party quest and you're in a really strong guild. Now, when it comes to the mutant apes, there are two main schools of thought. First is that mutant apes are tremendously undervalued because they are the last entry point to the prestigious Bored Ape Yacht Club, which are by now considered blue chip, and people are sleeping on it right now. Second is that they are still seen as second class because they are still not original apes and have a lower price point, have more supply, and the artwork isn't as clean. So with these two things in mind, I divided this video into two parts to explain these two thoughts in more detail. But first, let me change it to something a little bit more comfortable. Now, according to their website, a mutant version of your ape allows newcomers into the Bored Apes ecosystem at a lower tier of the membership. Everything going forward occurs with the intention of accruing utility, and members only benefit to the Bored Apes first, but also mutants, and to a lesser extent, the Bored Apes with the Colonel Club companions. So instead of vying for an ape, what you could do is get into mutant apes for the floor price of 4 ETH and it still gets you into the board apes club and this is obviously way less riskier and putting all your ETH into one board ape is say you only own 30 ETH in your entire portfolio. People just want board apes because it was kind of the first to do a lot of things. They're the originators, they're OG, after the punks, and their rarity drives price. They're promising a lot of things in their roadmap 2.0, including a physical members-only clubhouse in Miami. There is talk of a coffee shop being made and a cartoon show, and they're also working on their own coin coming Q1 2022. That's why mutant prices jumped together with the board apes price. A rising tide raises all ships. When you get into mutant apes, think of it as buying the cheapest flat in a really nice neighborhood lots of developmental plans by a really good government and other people can see it right now because the reno isn't done yet but you're getting in early think of it as being a small fish in a big pond and another point i'd like to add is we're on the cusp of future intellectual properties and how they will be made and the future of web 3.0 and we have the opportunity to own a share of these by getting into these mutant ape entities now if you compare crypto punks with bored apes the only thing that has changed about the CryptoPunks since they were given out for free is merely just more exposure to them in the story. Punks are about 3 years old, while Bored Apes are about 5 months old, and they already have a roadmap and all these other crazy developmental plans. That just means there's a lot more growth and potential for the Bored Apes compared to the OG of OGs, the Punks, where people are just buying them for namesake. Now let's move on to the second school of thought, and that is, mutant apes can be seen as not as prestigious and second class to the apes because the art just isn't as clean as the original board apes. They look like mutants, and let's face it, they're not women, and they're not Stacys. Then there's this issue of supply. There are 20,000 of them instead of the original 10,000. So there is double the supply, meaning there could always be a surplus of mutants. But I think this is a fundamental point and what people don't understand is they are the final entry to the apes community. So over time, as the NFT space gets bigger, there will be lesser and lesser apes. So a total of 30,000 apes consisting of the 10,000 board apes plus the 20,000 mutants. And that's an insanely low number to get into an exclusive NFT club, arguably the second biggest one after the CryptoPunks. 
But because the mutant apes are a secondary collection, they're still sitting at a cheaper price point than the original board apes, and they can be seen as less prestigious. But keep in mind that they are still an official derivative collection, so in my opinion, that still gives it a lot of validation. So if you were trying to get into a blue chip collection and the last boat has arrived, would you still take it? For me, I definitely think I would because the pros outweigh the cons and I'm super interested in getting one of these apes once Eve has cooled down a little bit. Let me explain. So what will I be doing with the tree Eve I got from the Metapurse Fellowship? Well, most likely I'll be using the tree Eve plus one Eve from my own portfolio to purchase one of these mutant apes. However, what I noticed is that there is an inverse correlation with the NFT market with the price of ETH, and when ETH price pumps, the value of the NFT collection will drop. And this is universal across most NFT collections. Now let's take a bigger view of the crypto market. Based on my own TA, and based on my own analysis of the ETH market cycle, you can see that ETH and Bitcoin are breaking their all-time high previous resistance levels. They're on a steady uptrend, hitting their all-time high numbers. By the time I post this video, the market will have corrected a little bit, although the trend is still going steady upwards. This will continue through February and March of 2022, and a lot of crypto OGs, traders, and diamond hands will start to DCA exit and take profit to accumulate more at the bottom. And the reason for this is all-time highs will not last forever, as we've seen in the March of 2021 and December of 2017. And once that crash happens, I'll happily make my way into the Mutant Apes collection. You also want to keep in mind that the value of your NFT will not appreciate as quickly as the ETH asset that you hold. And you don't want to be caught dead with an asset that value is stored in ETH, remains stagnant, while the currency it is priced at, its intrinsic value is increasing decreasing. So because of this inverse correlation, I will say wait a little bit more, wait a few more months, there really is no hurry. And once the crypto market euphoria has calmed down a little bit, I'll start to look into mutants again. So this is my personal opinion and take on the market. Thanks for watching. I'll take care and I'll see you in my next video.